Good afternoon, good morning and good evening everyone. We are pleased to welcome you to our today's webinar that is dedicated to give you some information on, about the HIG BRM. Thanks so much for joining. This is the first of our four webinar series dealing with the HIG BRM, the brand and retail module. And today we will have a closer look at the social and environmental risk assessment and strategy section as assessed in within the management system section of the BRM. And let me just uh, ask you, can you hear me well? Could you send a yes in the comment function, please? Okay, that seems to be working well. Very good. My name is Karin Ekberg and I'm the CEO and founder of Leadership and Sustainability. I have a long experience in the sustainability area. I have worked in many different sectors, uh, but uh, now since uh, more than 12 years, I'm actually focusing very much on the apparel, textile and footwear sector and also the broader retail sector. And um, we have um, also, uh, we are working as consultants. So we, uh, the company was founded in 2015. And, uh, and, but I have also been uh, responsible for environment globally at Adidas during several years. Okay, let's move forward. And today, uh, our speakers today, you will, you will see me and hear me today, but I also have a guest here. This is our new team member, Silla Jeschelut. And Silla, would you like to take it away, please? Thank you, Karin. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Sulay Eshiliurt. I recently joined the leadership and sustainability team as a senior sustainability manager. Previously, I was leading sustainability projects at the Swedish Fashion Retail Index, and I have spent more than 10 years in the sustainability area. Thank you so much for joining us today. Let's have a brief look at how to use the GoToWebinar features. You are all on mute today in order to ensure audio quality, but you are welcome to send us your questions throughout this webinar. If you wish to do so, then please use the question function. The presentation will be available for download after the webinar, and it will also be possible to watch the recording. You will receive an email with the details a few days after the webinar. Here is an overview on what we will do today. We will cover the BRM management system. We will talk about the value chain definition and the materiality assessment process and criteria and how to develop a sustainability strategy. And finally, we will give you a brief information about leadership and sustainability. And then we will have time for your questions. We will cover these specific questions in the BRM module management system. Evaluation of supply chain operations, environmental social risk assessment, identification of risks, impacts and opportunities, environmental social improvements, environmental communication and grievance mechanism. We also added the links to the guidance information. And we will cover both environment and social impacts today. In the tool, these are divided into two sections but the structure and content of the questions are very similar, so we have decided to include both environment and social factors here. We will speak a lot about due diligence, so let us begin with the definition. Due diligence is the process enterprises should carry out to identify, prevent, mitigate and account for how they address these actual and potential adverse impacts in their own operations, their supply chain and other business relationships, as recommended in the OECD guidelines for MNEs. An effective due diligence should be supported by efforts to embed responsible business conduct into policies and management systems and aims to enable enterprises to remediate adverse impacts that they cause or to which they contribute. And now let me hand over to Karin to continue with our first BRM question today. Karin, I can't hear you. Thank you so much, Sila. And here, <laughs> and here we will uh, continue with, them, uh, with the first question. And you should now be able to see my slide here. I hope you can do that. Yes. All right, that's good. Okay, so let's move to the first question. And uh, this question is about 
evaluating the value chain operation. And the question is, has your company evaluated its value chain operations? And here, the requirements are to get a clear understanding and visibility on your entire value chain operations. So you do need to map and list out your ent entities and supply chain partners. This question requires you to do your entire mapping of your entire operations, including both upstream and downstream segments. And SAC has made available a template for you that you can use uh, for your mapping exercise. And uh, you have it, uh, you see two screenshots here. There are several tabs in that, um, in that template and you can download it here. Uh, to the right at the bottom. You can see here, for example, for your material use and here for your supply chain um, are the um, uh, tem templates where you can add your information. And regarding the value chain, we have a representation that we have developed and it's very, very simple actually. But we think that in order to have a good structure for the materiality assessment, we need to have a description of our value chain. And this will, of course, be different from company to company. So every company has its own value chain. Uh, of course, the many are very similar um, to each other, but you should design and define your own value chain representation. And here you see a very detailed example. And um, at the top of this slide, you see the management processes, and then we have the business processes where the products are designed, manufactured uh, and sold. And we have even included um, the use and end of life because it just makes sense from a sustainability perspective to add those um, segments as well. And at the bottom, you can see support processes, human resources, communication, IT, finance, can be legal and even other um, departments as well. And once you have your value chain mapped, you can assess where you may have sustainability impacts, risks and opportunities. And uh, now let's look, have a look also at the supply chain level. So here you see now this is, now it gets a bit more complicated. And obviously some of you come from quite large brands. So you would have this picture here multiplied by perhaps 20, 100 or so. So we are talking about a really, really uh, complex mapping that you need to do here in order to uh, suffice uh, for the question number one. So quite a lot of work, but this is of course the groundwork that you lay for your entire sustainability program in your corporation. And with that, let's move over now to the next question, question number two. And this question uh, says, does your company have an environmental and social risk assessment? And the requirements are that you need to formalize your environmental social risk assessment process. You should name uh, your risk factors. Um, you should also select referenced standards and resources. And also you should um, mention and include which stakeholders you have, um, you have worked with and consulted. Uh, throughout your process. And here we will now dive a bit deeper. Um, I would like to um, tell you also there is a lot of guidance in the how to HIG for the BRM related to these specific questions, also with a lot of additional guidance uh, documents that you can uh, click and download. Uh, but what is important here is, of course, that risks, they are always estimated and prioritized depending on likelihood and severity. And with the method that we have developed over the past actually 20 years, we look at status, impacts, risks and opportunities. And this is also, by the way, according to the GRI guidelines for reporting, so the Global Reporting Initiative. And um, we define the value chain. We saw the representation right now. And then we also define the sustainability impact categories. And uh, after that, we have to look at several different risk factors. And the BRM actually defines the following risk factors that we should be looking at. The sector risk factors, business model, sourcing model, product, and country. And this is also um, uh, 
uh, content that actually comes from the OECD due diligence guidelines. And uh, there may even be other risk factors that you need to take into account as well. And you can also see the different resources here uh, that you can use um, when you work uh, on this. And now I want to explain a bit more about those different risk factors. And uh, so the sector risk factors, those are the general risks the OECD has identified as likely risks for the apparel and footwear industry, such as, for example, hazardous chemicals, water consumption, water pollution and greenhouse gas emissions. And then the business model risk factors. Those are the company's business model, such as the number of product lines it sells and how often those product lines are changed. For example, how many seasons per year we have. And those may all affect the risk of the harm in the company supply chain. And then we have the sourcing model risk factors, a bit similar to the business model risk factors in my view. And this is um, the company's sourcing model, such as whether it is sourcing from a large range of suppliers, the nature of the contractual relationships, and whether sourcing is direct or indirect. And uh, this may also increase or decrease the degree of um, risk in the supply chain or in the value chain even. And then we have the product risk factors that hold, um, so products that hold a higher risk of impact than others due to the processes that are used in the manufacturing of those products. And finally, we have the counter risk factors, the conditions in a particular country or production cluster or within the industry within a particular country, which may make the above sector risks more likely. And these generally include governance, socioeconomic factors, and industry factors. And um, SAC and BRM also asks which standards you have referenced in your process to identify those salient um, risks, impacts, and opportunities. And also let me explain the term salient. It's not a term that we hear in our daily um, work perhaps, but with salient, uh, we mean the most important risks, impacts and opportunities. So the highest risks, let's say. And the standards uh, that you will be asked, did you reference those in your process? Are the B Corp, the GRI, the Global Reporting Initiative, the ISO 14001, the Environmental Management System Standard from ISO, and there are a few others listed here as well for the environment. And for the social side, we also have again the GRI and then obviously the ILO core conventions, the OECD due diligence guidance, and a few others as well that are important. And then another um, uh, question you will get as a follow up question uh, for this question number two is also which. Uh, internal or external experts were con consulted in identifying your salient environmental risks, impacts and opportunities, employees, consumers, trade unions and um, any others. So you should indicate that in your response. And now uh, let me now go a bit deeper into what we call the materiality assessment methodology and what is really um, our methodology to assess the impacts, risks and opportunities in the value chain, focusing very much uh, on the different tiers in the value chain, the different segments in the value chain, and also the products and the processes. So we have, as I mentioned, we define the value chain, we define the sustainability impact categories, and then the risks will be estimated and prioritized depending on likelihood and severity. And we look at status, impacts, risks and opportunity. And for risks, we have defined several different perspectives. And the same we have done for opportunities as well. So it's quite a granular uh, assessment that we conduct. And then we use a very simple qualitative quantitative approach where we um, give a number for each and every situation uh, according to one, two, three, basically with a three 
will mean that we don't have anything in place, we don't have a management system in place, we have no program to collect energy data, or we have very significant risks, or we have significant impact, or even if we have a significant opportunity. So a three doesn't mean bad in that sense or worse, but it means that we need to take action because of course the opportunities are really important as well and the greater the opportunity the better and therefore we should be acting as well so more so the more fees we have in our assessment the more we would like to act and this gives us a really good understanding of our entire value chain uh, sorry of our entire um, impact risks and opportunities and here you can see sorry a specific example with a bit of a simpler value chain than the previous representation and you also see here uh, the risks that also are listed in the BRM. So those are, you can of course adjust this uh, depending on your company and which uh, potential risks you think are really important uh, but those are the ones that are right now listed in the BRM. So you see on the environmental side we begin with animal welfare, biodiversity, deforestation etc and then on the social side we also have a lot, whole range of different topics that should be included in the assessment. And now in our methodology, we work in Excel. We work with a very detailed um, assessment matrix. And uh, we do the assessment, as I mentioned, with one, two, three. And then based on those results, we make, we summarize the results. So we make what we call a hotspot. And here you can see an example of such a hotspot result where we now have been summarizing everything into only risks and only opportunities. And for example, here you can see some of the segments in the value chain, management and strategy processes, and then risks and opportunities, design and then risks and opportunities and procurement the same. And you also see some, um, examples here now from the environmental side this is just an example this is just a small extract from a much larger table of course and now uh, what do we see here well the color coding means that the dark orange cells that you can see here means that we have significant impacts and risks and the lighter orange means that we have medium impacts and risks, the dark green that we have significant opportunities, the, me, um, the lighter green that we have medium opportunities. And when it is white, it's like, yeah, this is a much a, a smaller impact risk or opportunity. And with this, you really have a, a great picture of your entire value chain and all sustainability impact categories. And from here, you now know where are my really, where are, where are my biggest risks? So where are my salient risks? Uh, and also where are my greatest opportunities? And then based on this, you can of course develop your sustainability strategy and your programs based on this, knowing that of course, the darker the color, the higher the number, the more you need to act. And um, we will also, in our next webinar, actually already tomorrow, we will be focusing on the environmental uh, management in the supply chain. And there we will also build on this method and show you what it, this can look like when you look into your supply chain only, so into your different supplier um, uh, production units. And um, now let's move on and see what are then the results. Uh, of the environmental and social risk assessment. And now we have come to the question number three in this uh, section, which is from this risk assessment process where salient environmental risks, impacts and opportunities identified. And uh, then you should select all that apply. So if you respond yes to the question, you will get this follow up um, uh, field here where you can select all the ones all of them that apply to you and where you say this is uh, where I have my main risks. And, um, and then 
when, once you have done that, so for every risk you identify here or click on or mark up, you will get another follow-up questions. And for those of you who are already with, working with BRM, you will know that the BRM is very comprehensive. And wherever you respond with yes, nearly always you will, uh, you will receive follow-up questions. So it is quite nested, uh, the, entire, um, the entire module. And then, so uh, you will get follow-up questions uh, like identification of the risks, impacts and opportunities. So you will need for every selected risk, you will, uh, you will need to respond to several follow-up questions. Do you have an established program for this risk? Are there improvement steps and implementation for this risk? Do you, uh, are you in compliance with all applicable regulations? Have you addressed the value chain, the business stages? And then of course, if you have worked in a matrix like the one we were looking at previously, you will be able to say, yes, I have, because you have covered your entire value chain. Do you have priority focus areas? Uh, do you have any actions? Have you measured your impacts and reduction targets? And uh, then there is also, if you would select energy and or water, additional questions will appear. And for those of you who are familiar with the HIC-FEM, the Facility Environmental Module, the questions are quite similar where you then um, will um, include information about the quantities that you have for uh, energy and, and or water. And uh, then now the next question, number four, is about improvements, environmental and social improvements. And um, the question is, has your company committed to environmental social improvements as a result of your risk assessment process? And again, the requirements are that you have done a stakeholder survey, that you have a strategy approved by senior management, that you have adaption processes in place, you need to have also a reflection or show how you are implementing the strategy. The responsibilities need to be clearly uh, communicated. And here now, I also want to dive in a bit deeper again and move on and speak about how to develop a sustainability strategy or program. So basically, how can you um, respond to this question here beyond uh, what, uh, what is asked uh, in those requirements here? So um, let's have a look there. So the overall process for developing a sustainability strategy is very simple, really. You have to know that you want to do that. Then you conduct the materiality assessment. And we were looking at that already. And then we come to the phase of the strategy development. And uh, here we have a few very, very simple steps. Um, the, it is not. It is really not rocket science, but you need to define your own process for how you want to develop your strategy, and then work along this uh, process. So you define your team that should be working on it, a process and a timeline, and then what is really good to do at the very beginning that is to think about what is my ambition level with my strategy, and uh, this is perhaps something you will be debating throughout the entire process of developing your strategy, but give it a thought already at the beginning. So there are companies that say, we want to be the best in our sector, or we want to be, um, or we want, we actually cannot afford to be the best, or we don't have that ambition. We think that we need to start, we are only starting now, we need to start with being compliant. That is what is important for us right now, and that perhaps later we can take another step and increase our ambition. And this is, of course, very important to know and discuss at the outset of your project to develop your strategy, because all the actions and goals and programs that you will develop will, of course, depend on your ambition level. And it might, it might change over time throughout the process because perhaps you see that, oh, this and this goal is something, it is not that difficult to reach it as I, as I thought. Perhaps I can actually be a bit more ambitious than I thought. Anyway, so that is an important element as well. 
Then depending a bit on how you work with your corporate strategy, you might work with vision and mission statements. Perhaps you only work with policies. It depends, but of course, correspondingly, then you should be developing your sustainability vision, mission or policy statements. And then we have what we call the goal iteration process. And we have uh, made a small illustration for that because why iteration? Well, it is because it is very, very difficult to just, you know, immediately put, put down a strategy onto a paper that is really well balanced and is possible to implement. So what you need to do is you need to work, you, could, you enter here from the left with a few tentative goals. So you say, okay, if I want to save energy in my own operations by 10% by 2025, which type of program do I need in order to do that? What would it cost me? Which resources? Do we have those resources today? Or do we need to hire more people in order to do that? Do we need to have some database to collect the data, etc.? And then uh, you, uh, you basically go through with a series of different tentative goals. You do this iteration process and then you test them together and you look at also the business case. Does it pay off to, to do this? And you may have perhaps competing goals where you need to um, understand uh, is, uh, which goal is better. And then it's always good to look at what is the business case? How much does it cost me? What is the payoff? Perhaps you can have one goal where you need to invest much less than with another goal in order to reach a very similar effect. And so, so this process takes time. It needs to say it. You may need to debate. You need, may need to do additional research as well. Perhaps um, you need to understand, yes, we, we see uh, perhaps we need a software uh, that can support us with that data collection. And then, of course, you need to understand what would that cost, etc. So there may be a lot of work here. And then you continuously should also try to embed and align with your business strategy as much as possible. And I know there are some brands and retailers and companies in general, also manufacturing companies that have come very far when it comes to aligning the sustainability work with the business strategy. But there are also um, uh, lots of companies who still have a lot to do here, but I can all, all just encourage you to try to link as much as possible to the business strategy, engage with your management and seek to understand what is the business strategy over the next few years? How can I in my sustainability department align with that, support the business strategy, or is the business strategy perhaps taking decisions that will make it more difficult for me to manage my sustainability program. Yeah, so this is important. And then of course you need to secure your management buy-in and you, you need to take a final decision and get your management approval and then you can finalize your strategy. So as you can see, a very simple process, but of course, once you dive in here, uh, you may need to, uh, you may need to work quite hard in order to, uh, to get there. And then one thing also about goal setting. So depending on the maturity of the goal setting process within your company, if it's the first time you set goals in the sustainability area, there may be a lot of uncertainty. Can we really reach those goals and how can we be sure that we can reach them? And um, I can only encourage you to really research your goals well enough so that you know what will it take to reach this. But of course, there is never a guarantee that you will reach a certain goal. So there is a, you need to take a leap of faith and uh, then uh, just work towards that goal. And of course, it's also allowed to change the goal over time. And you, perhaps you see, no, we can reach it much faster or no, we actually have a real um, a, a roadblock here. It will take us another two, year, uh, two years to reach this goal and then you can adjust. So that is allowed as well. But I wanted to give you some guidance regarding the goal setting itself. We saw the materiality assessment and there we saw what was dark orange and dark green. Focus on those areas and focus on the issues that are really strategically important to your company. And depending on where you are 
with your sustainability journey, you may need to prioritize very, very strictly. So you cannot do everything at the same time. And you really need to decide where am I putting, you know, where am I putting my efforts? And then set stretch goals as well. So, so don't define goals where you are sure, yeah, I can actually reach them tomorrow, but really set stretch goals. I think we, we need that uh, both on the environmental side and the social side. There is still so much to do. And then also, as I mentioned, connect your goals to your business strategy. Ensure that you have the support and ownership. Challenge your management to support your uh, sustainability strategy. Make them ambassadors for you. And uh, also, of course, throughout the organization, engage with your organization, make them aware about your strategy and make sure that you get the support you can. Also from the different business functions. Um, so uh, we have seen, I mean, over the past 30 years, uh, with the development of sustainability programs, very often uh, we had sustainability teams sitting sometimes quite far away from the business, from the actual business. And that is, um, that is changing and it needs to change fast. You need to integrate the sustainability work into the actual business work. And then, of course, also set long-term goals. So this is also important. And I have a very, very simple uh, table for you to show how you can uh, include your different program elements. Uh, here again, we have the different uh, value chain segments, uh, again, very simplified. And here also summarized only, not in a very, not in a detailed uh, manner at all. You can detail it out for yourself. And then you can, into this matrix, you can then add the different programs you have. And you can compare it with your materiality assessment. So of course, wherever you had dark orange or dark green, this is where you should put your programs first. And then you can uh, consider, um, are my colors changing here? If I, um, if I include, for example, um, an energy program here, are my energy, uh, do I take care of the energy opportunities that I have then? But of course, this is, uh, this is just one example. You can, you can, of course, develop it how you, uh, the way that suits your program. And um, regarding the business case, um, I will have I have one slide about the business case as well. So let me uh, let me go there. And um, so um, there are um, we have done a lot of research uh, into the topic of the business case because, in my view, it is really important to have a strong business case for sustainability within your organization. Um, it is important because you need always, on a daily basis, you need to be able to explain why are we having this sustainability strategy? Why are we having these goals? What is the impact? What is the benefit of having it? What does it cost? And uh, if uh, your colleagues are not asking you, then probably your managers are. And that's why uh, we have spent a lot of time researching this as well. And so there are lots of options. There are lots of uh, studies made in this area, but we have seen that they are actually quite aligned. And we have done like a best summary out of what is, has already been published. And with that, you can see here, we have defined six different categories of the business case. And if we walk from the left here, um, uh, clockwise, we begin with compliance. So there is always a compliance piece in the sustainability work. Then we have risk minimization, we have cost savings, we have integrated operations, so more effective operations, we have brand and reputation enhancement, and we have innovation and market development. And all of all those categories are actually slightly different, but we can also bundle them two and two. So compliance and risk minimization. Here, it's everything about avoiding costs. And then for, and so those are costs you wouldn't have, but you also don't want to have them in the future. So for example, if you would have a legal compliance issue, if you would need to pay a fine that would hurt you, 
but if you have a good compliance management system you wouldn't need you wouldn't have that compliance program and wouldn't need to pay that fine so you would avoid that cost cost savings and integrated operations popular examples are um for example um saving energy saving energy is a very low hanging fruit in many cases uh, when you, if you haven't had a program to save energy, you can actually save a lot of money uh, with the energy sa an energy saving program. And uh, then brand and reputation enhancement and innovation and market development. This is really about generating additional revenue. So perhaps the most interesting piece um, of this uh, of those categories, and uh, but also not so easy so it may take some time until until you get there and i hope that this differentiation is helpful for you when you develop your strategy um, because most of the programs you would have you can actually show that they might uh, meet or that they might be divided into one of those six categories and now let's move on to the next question implementation and follow-up and so now you have your strategy and uh, you need to make sure it gets implemented and therefore uh, we need to get started uh, with the implementation and there is one commonly used implementation approach for business strategies and this is the McKinsey 7S model that you can see here to the left very often used also for business strategies all these elements needs to fit the new strategy so your old structure and systems will not do anymore and um, you need a strong leadership approach to do this so as I mentioned, you really need to have your management uh, showing uh, showing support and showing leadership now. And also, are you yourself aware of the leadership qualities that you may need to develop in order to be successful with your strategy? Do you know what you need to know about your business? Do you understand the different business operations? Do you know how procurement works? Do you know how retail works, how logistics works? Can you communicate with them? Can you build bridges to them for them to support your um, sustainability strategy? And then uh, you uh, build your organization and we have again here our value chain uh, organization or uh, mapping that you can use also of course in order to identify which persons would i need to have into my uh, strategy team and of course especially where you had your major risks and your major opportunities and where you have your program you need people in your business from those specific business functions that can who can support you in your team so uh, include them into your team and then finally uh, you can build your pyramid of your documentation or of your system so you have your strategy you have your management systems your programs and uh, at the at the bottom then your information and data management and um, then the next question question number eight is about environmental communication so does your company publicly share information about its environmental risk management and uh, it is also asked what is shared and how are you sharing this information and uh, one uh, and this is now on the environmental side so uh, for all the previous questions they are identical for environment and for social and of course the response to the questions will be different but here for question number eight we have slightly different uh, wording in the or slightly different focus in the questions so here is for the environmental uh, side and then uh, on the social side we have the grievance mechanism so the question is does your company have a safe effective way or grievance mechanism for those impacted by social human rights to submit complaints and concerns and the requirements is the mechanism designed and implemented to meet effectiveness criteria that are legitimate accessible predictable equitable transparent rights compatible and a source of continuous learning and based on engagement and dialogue 
and here you can respond yes or no. Does your company ensure that retaliation is prohibited, confidentiality is preserved, and that there are no negative consequences towards employees who report grievances and complaints? And the answer options are yes and no. And I can assure you um, that this question is actually, it's not so easy to set up a grievance um, mechanism or a grievance system that really also protects the people who report and which stakeholders can make use of this mechanism and does your company credibly prioritize and address complaints or concerns and what is included in the monitoring of the complaint and how does the grievance mechanism work so quite a lot of detailed uh, detailed um, questions here about that and uh, let me also give you some more detailed information but i think we will not uh, spend too much time um, reading this out loud but here is also an explanation of the different criteria. so it needs to be legitimate the the system to enable trust from the stakeholder groups for whose use they are intended and also being accountable for the fair conduct of the grievance process it needs to be accessible it needs to be predictable, so it needs to provide a clear and known procedure. It needs to be equitable, transparent, rights compatible. So rights compatible, meaning that the outcomes and remedies that they are also in accordance with internationally recognized human rights. They should be a source of continuous learning and they should also be based on engagement and dialogue. And uh, so these are also really important elements or uh, important criteria for the grievance mechanism. And with that, we have covered the questions we wanted to cover in this webinar. And now I would like to give you some brief information about our company, and then I want to open up for your questions. So leadership and sustainability, we promote sustainability as corporate strategy, as business model, and also as leadership quality and hence of course the name leadership and sustainability because that combination is so important and we are based in Germany our headquarters are here in Germany the southern part of Germany but we have teams uh, in actually in all parts of the world we are a member of SAC and we're also approved HIG-FEM and SLCP verifiers and training, trainer bodies. And we're also CETIHC training providers. And here you can see an overview of our services. So we uh, conduct materiality assessment, as you can believe, uh, uh, since we had quite a lot of focus on that topic today and on the strategy topic as well. Um, but we do uh, all types of uh, conventional consulting carbon footprinting as well uh, or different other risk assessments to specific regarding specific topics uh, then regarding materials and products supply chain and facilities and then workshops and trainings and here you can see some of our team members uh, we are growing as we speak and so the team is actually a bit larger uh, in the meantime than what you can see here and also I wouldn't like to do some marketing for our next webinars. I told you that this is a series of four webinars where we have picked out specific elements of the brand and retail module. It is such a comprehensive module, but we have selected a few sections that we are focusing on uh, in those webinars. So tomorrow already, same time, we will be speaking about the supply chain management program with focus on the environmental performance. And then um, in one week from now, we will be speaking about the supply chain management and focus on the social performance. And the last webinar is one week later again about the operations and logistics and there fo with focus on the environment uh, section. And now, I would like to give you also the opportunity to ask your questions and let me open up the question box and see if you have any questions. So here I only see the remarks that you could hear me well from earlier today. Do you have any questions regarding the BRM 
regarding the content of, that we have covered so far. Not one single question. Okay. No. It's still... Okay, we have here one question. How to work on the BRM for textile manufacturers? Yes. Um, so, uh, you sh also the, the brand and retail module is really designed and focusing on brands and retailers. So, uh, for you, perhaps not all questions would be relevant for you. But if you are interested in developing your own sustainability program, your own strategy, then actually it, uh, it will be really helpful to use the BRM. Uh, because there are lots of questions that will support you in understanding your situation better and also give you a lot of ideas about what you can do. So if you are interested in doing that, you can uh, organize uh, that you get access to the BRM and then you can also select the questions that you work with. But it would not be like a formal self-assessment since um, since there are probably also several questions or lots of questions that are not really relevant for you, depending on also on how large you are. If you are a manufacturing group with lots of uh, factories, for example, um, it is um, BRM can actually be very useful to you. Yeah. Good. All right. So it seems that there are no further questions. You can always reach out, of course, uh, to us um, if you have questions later. And with that, then, I would like to uh, finish. I would like to thank uh, some of my team members here. So Silla, who uh, was joining us today. Um, and then I would like to thank also Sophia, who has um, prepared our newsletter and our blog articles for this webinar series, which means actually quite a lot of work to prepare that. And then also Julia, who has supported in developing this, this presentation here. And before I say goodbye, I wish to let you know that there will be a survey with a few questions after this webinar. And we are really grateful for your input. So please just give us the feedback you want to give us about what we can improve, what you like, and, uh, and if there is any support we can give to you in the future. It takes two minutes to respond. It's a very small survey. And with that, thanks so much for joining us today and have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.